If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. It is the largest music store in the United States. Excited to see it. The last episode, you got to see me tour Sweetwater Music in Fort Wayne, Indiana. What a great place. If you ever get a chance to visit, I highly would recommend you do so. And if you haven't watched that video yet, I would like you to go do that. You can even stop this video right now, go watch my tour of Sweetwater. They're not sponsoring me. It was just really a cool tour, and I think you'll enjoy it. What a great place. Also, appreciate it if you click like and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Hey, guys. Welcome back to Let's Build a Guitar. It's been 12 weeks since I've been back around. Of course, I've been filming and putting some things on the internet for you guys to, to watch and had a few things pre-recorded. Finally back in and I'm gonna be working on Tony's guitar. I've got this uh, top glued to the base and it's actually been sitting glued now for actually 12 weeks. So it should be pretty good and solid. Hey, we have been all over the place. It's hard to believe. I've never done anything like what we just did, but First, went to Hawaii. The awesome thing in Hawaii was I got to ride a Triumph motorcycle around the island of Oahu, which is really, really cool. It's so incredible to ride a motorcycle when you've got literally Jurassic Park or Jumanji on one side and you've got the ocean on the other side as you come around Kualoa Ranch. Such a beautiful area there. Uh, right now, Hawaii is a little bit crazy, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend going right now. Then we got back and my wife and I had a uh, small job. We recorded a uh, botanic garden. It's something else that we do. So we went down to Tulsa, Oklahoma, recorded a botanic garden. Here you will discover the beautiful Tulsa Botanic Garden. The children's discovery garden breathes life and fantasy into the imagination of both the young and not so young. Then we went over to Branson, Missouri and we went down to uh, Tennessee around Elizabethton where you saw us in the little cabin down there in the woods which was so incredible so peaceful really good to get away there uh, we went south a little further went down into Greenville South Carolina and then on to Atlanta Georgia and then we came back up to Fort Wayne Indiana where I got to record and go through Sweetwater absolutely incredible if you haven't seen that video go back and watch the video of Sweetwater I have never seen a place like this I've never seen so many guitar pedals in one place so so cool uh, but what was really cool wasn't just the place and the fact that it's the largest music store in America but the attitude of the company wow so so awesome and what company has tornado slides in it Sweetwater does and then after Fort Wayne Indiana we went to Chicago Illinois got to see our daughter and son-in-law for a little while which was really really great and now I am back in Minnesota and now it's time to take this thing apart and then we're going to route the top to, to match the what's on the back there and need to level and sand off this the face I think we're gonna find some really really good curly maple in here Okay, I've got it all taken off. As you can see, this is really rough and very uneven at this point. But that's not our concern. Our concern is how did this seam turn out? And it's looking very, very tight, very good. So the next step here is I am going to use a bandsaw and I will cut very close to this, not touching this, but cut very close to this. And then we're gonna route the rest out. By the way, when we were at Sweetwater, we invested in some new microphones, some lapel wireless, because I want to make sure that we get good sound, especially when I'm outside and it'll cut down on some of the excess noise. And then I found out that with my camera, which uses a media mod, because it's a GoPro that I'm using right now, apparently the jack on my media mod isn't working. 
not with any of the microphones I have, and I made sure to turn it on because uh, you can turn on which microphone you're using and all on the GoPro. So I know that, done that, and it, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I have to wiggle it so it's not a tight connection in there. So kind of bummed by that because I've got these nice mics. One day I'll get to use them. Well, let's go ahead and go down and get this thing cut out on the bandsaw, and then we'll get it routed, and then we'll sand the top. My options now then to route, I got trucks going by down there. Well, I've got a couple of options now to route out the top now that I've got it cut out. I can, this is a flat side, so I could use a router with the bit where the ball bearing is on the shaft side. This obviously would be turned upside down, would come in, I can route it with that, or I could use a bit where the the ball bearing is on the tip side and I could come down and let it run around but basically this is becoming a template for the top part now if you've been doing woodworking for a long time of course you know that I'm speaking more to those who are getting started and the possibilities that you have obviously my top is pretty rough I need to either get this leveled first before I would use this otherwise my router is going to be getting stuck or moving or bouncing or use a flat side so I'm gonna go ahead and use this flat side and route it from the from the back side down routers are tools that you don't want to mess with in the sense of not being precautious and taking your time and securing everything so I make certain to secure it well to the table make sure I know where my table edges are under here as I come around so I'll only come around to about here and here and then I'll flip it around clamp it down again Except I just did this backwards, didn't I? Just got done saying I was gonna do it like this. So for the most part, I am going with the grain, but then there's areas that you kind of come around and you just, you really can't help but go against the grain in some places as it happens. And when I do that, you'll notice I was taking little tiny swaths, just kind of going along the edge of the grain. And that way I'm not taking off big chunks and breaking out big pieces of my maple. It may seem kind of putsy when I'm working across the grain or against the grain and just doing these little swaths, but it'll save you a lot of time of trying to fix places where you get gouged out. You throw that. Thank you. So 
So after about a half hour of sanding it with 60 grit, I've got it leveled off. And if I had a planer, that would be the thing to do. First use the planer or a big table sander, a big wide table sander that would sand it flat and get that all leveled out. I don't have those things. And I do have a friend who's got all of those tools and I could have gone over to use them as I oftentimes do. But with this video series, with this guitar in particular, I want to use basic tools and show that it can be done. Like the seam on here, which is really good and tight. And I didn't use a joiner. Instead, I just used a sander, a couple of bars on the side. If you watch the other clips, you can see that. I want to show you the magic now, though. So, here we are. This is with it sanded flat. we using just a little bit of water. I'm not going to soak it, but going to... And you're going to start to see the magic. The curly maple starts to pop out. Nice wide curly maple on there. So I talked with Tony the other night and I said, Tony, what, what colors do you like? And he said, well, I really like either a deep dark purple or a deep red. So I haven't decided which way to go yet, but probably going to end up going with either a deep red or a deep purple. Although this natural looks pretty good too. Maybe a natural burst into a deep red or purple. Something like that would be good. Hey, the, uh, the edges, the seam between the top and the base, really good and tight. I'm very pleased with that seam. And again, didn't use a planer, didn't use the big sander, just made sure I, I use a um, I use this sander, keeping it flat, and then I just use a, a square to make sure that I'm level and I'm able to get this nice and tight. I don't see any gaps in here. It's really good. Let's go over and work a little bit on that Union Jack Burst guitar. We got somebody to give that to and I need to do a lot of sanding on that. So I'm gonna break away from this for a little while and sand on that. Another tip that I want to give to you guys who are newer at doing this woodworking stuff is as, as I've been sanding, you can see there's a lot of sawdust here. This stuff can really come in handy if you need to fix a gap later on. So either a baggie, something, make sure to label it so you know what you got. This would be maple, curly maple, and I'll even put Curly Maple, Tony's guitar, I'll label it so I know exactly where that dust is from. And if by chance I have a mistake or I need to make a little bit of putty, I can use this sawdust to make filler and it's going to be exactly what the wood is. It is really good to be back home and I feel like I just haven't got near enough work done on this guitar, on this Union Jack Burst. Now, if, if you're new to watching the channel, uh, I, I just recently gave one of these, well, the sister to this, uh, away to a young man uh, named Caden. And this is your guitar. No way. And I'm hoping that it will just be an affirmation for you that you're on the right path. But... Wow. So you built this? Yeah. Huh. So. Man, I don't know what to say. Man, this sounds amazing. That was a lot of fun being able to give that one away. And this one, I already know who it's going to go to. And if I can, I want to try and get this one finished in like the next two weeks, if that is at all possible. I don't know if it is. It all depends on how the staining and spraying goes. But I've got to get to work on this. And then I've got to do a lot of editing and catching up. The fun thing is that while Marnie and I were gone, we went to visit our daughter in the Chicago area. Actually, she lives in Deerfield, Illinois. And we went to this little antique shop. And it was a very unique antique place. And I saw this desk that, as soon as I opened it up and looked at it, I was like, I want that desk for doing my editing and paying bills and stuff. But it's a 300-year-old desk. And looking at the woodwork on it, it's really cool to think about the guys who carved these things and did it all by hand. You know, I use I use power tools and all that on here, and they, they carved everything by hand. 
and it's kind of given me a new little interest of I wonder what it would be like I'm, I'm wondering about maybe doing some like really unique pieces of furniture what if I were to use some really high quality wood and and build some things because we went to some museums and I saw some things like from Frank Lloyd Wright and saw some different unique chairs that are in the museum in Milwaukee. I was thinking, what about some of these chairs that are just, they're kind of different, they're unique, but if you were to do it in like a curly maple or a leopard wood, well, anyway, I got a lot of say I need to do, and I got to get up there and start editing. Hey, we'll catch you next time, guys.